if you can think it and you can let yourself get emotionally involved with it and you stay focused on it, you can have it. Now that's a very basic concept, but it's not the easiest thing for most people to do. But the more you study it, the better you're going to get at it. So you're only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. The imagination is the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force that the world's ever known. Your imagination will take you anywhere and it'll give you anything you want. That's a beautiful thing to know. The law of vibration. This is the primary law right here. The law of attraction starts with the law of vibration. And let's take a look at where the law of vibration starts. It starts right in your own mind, right in your own head. Your mind activates brain cells. And when those brain cells are activated, you're impact. You impact the whole universe. This law of vibration starts in our own marvelous mind. We have infinite potential locked up within us. What we want to do is learn how to use it for good in our life. You're a mass of energy and you function on frequencies. You are. Now think of that. You may not think of yourself that way. Then you might say, what's this got to do with anything? Well, if you really understand it, you can attract more money. You can attract good health. You can attract great relationships. You can attract phenomenal business. If you don't know what you want to do, you're going to drift. You're just going to float around like a leaf on a windy day. You're not going to go in anywhere. You are a mass of energy and you function on frequencies. You see, energy functions on frequencies and that's what you're made of. Your body is a mass of living energy. A frequency is a level of vibration. That's exactly what a frequency is. There is an infinite number of frequencies. Remember I said you can think, activate brain cells, and you send off a charge of energy. Now stay with me here. This is so important, yet it's so misunderstood. There's an infinite number of frequencies. Albert Einstein, he said, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. Everything is energy, now think. That's all there is to it. Everything is energy, everything. Match the frequency of the reality you want. Earl Nangiel said essentially the same thing. He said, man simply doesn't think. We do not think. Understand mental activity does not constitute thinking. You have higher faculties. These higher faculties, most people know little about. Oh, they hear the word every now and then. You have perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition. These higher faculties are what literally separate us from all the rest of the animal kingdom. That is because we have been given the godlike ability to create our own environment. I carry this in my pocket. Every time I put my hand in my pocket and touch that card, the picture that's in my mind flashes on the screen in my mind. I painted the picture in words on the card and it's tucked into cells in my brain. Well, that's how I went from earning 4,175 and I did it in less than a year. This is no formal education, no business experience. I had no idea what I was doing. In less than five years, I was over a million dollars a year. I have found out since it was through the repetition of what I'm talking to you about right now. The action of repeating something. Remember too, that all who succeed in life get off to a bad start. And they pass through many heartbreaking struggles before they arrive. The turning point in the lives of those who succeed usually comes at the moment of some crises. 
through which they're introduced to their other selves. And you know, Earl taught me something that is so valuable. And I want to share it with you. He said, you know, Bob, there's an enormous difference between knowledge and the experience. Now, I want you to think about that. Because when he sat down and explained this to me, he said, you see, Bob, if we read the book, if we understand it, we can talk about what's in it. We have some knowledge. But he said, experience is totally different. Experience is when you've done it. So you just don't think this is right information. You know it's the right information. What I teach, I don't wonder if it works. I know it works. I'm going to be 87 in July. And I feel like I'm just getting warmed up. I have no intentions of slowing down. We are millions of dollars. We operate all over the world. And I believe we share some of the most powerful information in the world. It's not just something I've studied. It's something I did. Because you see, I have been struggling all my life. Up until I met Ray, and he gave me the book to study. I had really been struggling my whole life. Never had a half decent job, had nothing really going for me. And here I am, owning a company that operates in seven cities, three countries. And I thought, how did it happen? And I couldn't figure it out. And so I made up my mind, I was going to find out how my life changed. I want to know how it changed. And since that's what I wanted to know, that's what I started to find out. And that's where I learned the power of repetition. Success is 5% strategy, 95% mindset. You see, it's all about the mind. It's about your marvelous mind. As Van der Waal taught me, he says, it's all in awareness, Bob. He said, there's a marvelous inner world that exists within us. And the revelation of such a world enables us to do, to attain, to achieve anything we desire within the bounds or limits of nature. Now listen, this is vitally important information. I have never really studied finance. I'm not a financial guy. I've earned millions, literally millions of dollars. I think it's the easiest thing in the world today. But I don't know how to manage money. I really don't. And I had my own company. But you know, if we go back to what Einstein said, if we get the picture and we get into the energy of the good we desire, you can't help but have it manifest. You've got to become aware that you can and will attract whatever you require to cause whatever picture you're holding in your mind to move into form. It's not an accident. There is a marvelous inner world that exists within us. And the revelation of such a world enables us to do, to attain, to achieve anything we desire within the bounds or limits of nature. When you think of yourself, you've got to have an image. You've got to understand the mind, everything in your life. Let's look at it this way. There's the mind, and there's a positive sign and a negative sign. And he said, that actually represents a law of polarity, the law of opposites. And he said here, a power flowing into your consciousness. And when it flows into your consciousness, you create thoughts. You literally create thoughts from a power that flows into your conscious mind. You can originate thoughts. You can think something that no one has ever, ever thought before. You have a unique ability to do this. It's the thoughts that you think in your conscious mind that you impress upon your subconscious mind that causes you to feel the way you feel. Feeling is conscious awareness of vibration. Those feelings are expressed with and through your physical body. That causes the action which produces a result. Now, getting them all lined up, 
is called attitude. Now, some people line up on the negative side. They're going to see what's wrong. And you know something? They're right. There's something wrong. Other people go on the positive side. They see what's good. And they're right. There's something good. You can find what's right or wrong in anything. Doesn't matter what you're looking at. There's a power flowing into our consciousness. And we have the ability to think anything we want to think. And it's the thoughts we think that causes the feelings because we get emotionally involved with them. That causes the body to move into action and produce results. Problem with most people is they don't think. They really don't think. Mental activity never constitutes thinking. I remember when he said that, and I never forgot it. He said, that is your thinking mind. It's also referred to as the educational mind. This is you I'm talking about. Now, as I keep building this idea, you're really going to get to know yourself, the world you live in, and the laws that govern your being a lot better. Yet, as you understand yourself a lot better, you're going to find your finances are going to improve, your health is going to improve, your relationships are going to improve, your whole world starts to get better. The educated mind is also referred to sometimes as the intellectual mind. That's where all the intellectual factors are. Remember I told you what they were? The perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, and intuition. There's six of them. They are our mental muscles. And as you start to understand how to develop them, see, we watch other people do things and we become fascinated if they're doing it really well. What we want to understand, if we want to do it, we can do what they're doing. The subconscious mind is your emotional mind. When you're emotionally upset, you've got the wrong ideas being fed into that part of your mind. Now, over here on this side, because you can think, you have the ability to choose. And because you can choose, you can accept or reject everything that comes down the road. Everything. You can accept or reject everything, and then you have the ability you can originate. Now, the subconscious mind doesn't have the ability to do all those things. All those magnificent abilities are in the conscious mind, the subconscious. It must accept whatever you give to it. Must. It has no ability to reject. And get this. It's what you impress upon your subconscious mind that ultimately turns into results in our life. This is where we want to get our imagination going in high gear. Your subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what you've imagined and what's real. It has no ability to differentiate between the two. Unfortunately, most people imagine what's wrong. They think of what they don't want rather than what they do want. Let's take that knowledge and we'll say this is you today. There's information coming at you today and it is terrible information and it's flowing into your conscious mind. Now you have the ability to think, you have the ability to reject that. You can say, get out of here and they all go away. But you know something? Most people don't do that. You want to know what they do? This is what they do. They're not thinking at all. Their subconscious mind is wide open. And that information goes right into the subconscious mind. Remember what we said about subconscious? There's no ability to reject. All that negative information. Why would you leave a mind open like that? It's our paradigm. It's how we're programmed. We're literally programmed to live that way. Why did they do this? Well, let's take a look. Just close the window on that for a minute. Let's go over here. This is you as an infant. Now, the more you understand this, the more you're going to be able to put tomorrow's lesson to work. Because I'm going to get in, I'm going to show you how you attract whatever you're in harmonious vibration with. This is you as an infant. Your subconscious mind was wide open when you arrived on the scene. I don't care what language was spoken around you, that's the language you learned. If there was more than one language spoken around you, you would learn more than one language. You see everything that was going on around you. All the love, the hate, the prejudice, it was all programmed right into your subconscious mind. Every one of us has gathered an abundance of knowledge covering numerous subjects. However, most of what we've learned has very little, if anything, to do with our paradigm. Therefore, we frequently don't do what we already know how to do. I maintain that everyone that can hear my voice 
already knows how to at least double your income. Now you may be thinking, oh, that's not true. Oh yeah, listen, trust me. I've been there, I've done that. I've worked with thousands of people. I know how it works. Why is it that a person with a great formal education, worked in a good company for maybe 30 years, is struggling to meet a mortgage payment? Explain that to me. How does that work? They've gone right through our educational system. We're very dedicated to employees, maybe 30 or 40 years, and they're having difficulty making a mortgage payment. Doesn't make sense, does it? Well, all they know isn't working for them because the paradigm is in control of them. Their results are nothing but an expression of the paradigm. That's all that conditioning that took place before they could even think. If you want to change your results, it's essential that you change the paradigm. That's absolutely essential. A paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And think of this, almost all of our behavior is habitual. Something to really understand. Now let's take a look at this. You can create your own economy. You can create the life you really want. Nothing tricky about it. Energy functions on frequencies. Remember we said that? A frequency is a level of vibration. There's an infinite number of vibrations, of levels of vibrations, of frequencies, an infinite number. Let's take a look again at what Albert Einstein said. Everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This isn't a philosophy, it's physics. Here's the trick. Decide what kind of a life you actually want. Quit fooling around with your life. It's too short.